Hi, thanks for tuning in today. Good to have you back on the channel. Makuni fuel pump, pulse operated for twin carburetors. This unit here is from a 582, but it would be the same if it was a 503. Apparently this doesn't work. I don't know that yet. I don't have the airplane here to test it, so I'm going to bench test it, and then I'm gonna overhaul it, and then test it again to prove out that it does work properly. So stand by and we'll go through that process. So as you can see, we have no lines hooked up at all. How do we know where all the lines go when we go to hook this up? Well, we're looking at the arrows here. This is the arrow that points in, corresponds to this fitting right here. This will be the in or from the fuel supply so fuel will come in this tube and enter in according to the arrow. Now on this side, you see there's another arrow as well and a spot that's blanked off so it's not used on this application. And so now we've got the fuel coming in. Where does it come out? Here's an arrow going out. Corresponds to this fitting where the line will go on and feed one of the carburetors. This one over here, it's an out. So the fuel will come out here, go to the other carburetor, because this is for a twin carb setup. And here's yet another out, which of course is right there and it's blanked off for another application. So this is the in for the pump for fuel, out to the carburetor for fuel, out to the other carburetor for fuel. Let's flip it over. On this side, of course, we only have one fitting. These ones we've already know, those are all fuel lines. So this one here, this is the impulse line, goes on to this fitting. And the impulse line from here will go onto the fitting on the crankcase. Why is it hooked up like that? How does this fuel pump operate? Well, the, we'll really simplify this here and say, when the piston goes up, into inside the crankcase it creates a vacuum below it which then can draw on this fitting on in, in this fitting right here and so it's going to apply a vacuum and then as the piston goes down in the cylinder it's going to make a pressure this is going to switch over to a pressure so this is where the pulse part of it comes from so it's Vacuum pressure, vacuum pressure, vacuum pressure, vacuum pressure. And that's what operates the diaphragm that is located right in between these two gaskets here. And again, on the other side, there's two gaskets and a diaphragm over there. Now, one other very important thing on aircraft fuel pump is, I don't know whether it'll show, right here there's a little spot in the middle of the fitting here. Let's see if we can get closer, right there. That's actually not a speck of dirt. That's actually a very small precision drilled orifice. Why is it there? Okay. Well, because this line is hooked up to the crankcase and it has vacuum pressure, vacuum pressure applied to it, potentially fumes that could end up as oil, uh, liquid, can enter this part here. So the fuel pump is mounted so that anything that gets in here uh, liquid can drain out that little hole so that it doesn't hydraulic lock the uh, the diaphragm from working if it gets all full of oil the pump won't work so now that we've gone over that let's go over the testing part of how i can bench test this fuel pump and find out well, does it work or not the equipment that i'm going to require to do this test is a very simple, this is a big face because I like it. Uh, it's a vacuum and a pressure. So if I place this end in my mouth and apply some vacuum, we see it go to the vacuum side and I'll do that again and apply some pressure. And we saw it had pressure. So I know the tool works. The other thing that I need is a short piece of clean tubing. Now, test procedure, 
first thing I want to do is I want to find out if now I want to see will can I make this pump draw any vacuum which would then draw fuel into it so this is the inline so I want to put my test um, lead that goes to my fuel pump uh, vacuum test gauge onto there so this is the in and on the back side then I'm going to take my clean tube apply it to the impulse line and then the reason I want to clean is this end is going to go on my lips and I'm going to apply some suction and then some pressure in a quick succession and see what result we get on the gauge. Okay, so I'm going to do that right now. Okay, so I'm finished that. I did apply um, uh, vacuum pressure pulses to it. And I didn't, I could feel the, or hear the diaphragm inside moving, but I got no result whatsoever. So that's a, that's definitely a fail. So for some reason, this fuel pump is not working correctly. Now, next test that I can do with this is actually, I'm not going to do that yet. I'm going to show you the same test on a known good fuel pump. So this one with the red paint on it, it's the shop pump that I use running engines all the time if I don't have a fuel pump. So here again is the in arrow. So let's do the same test. We're going to attach our gauge onto the in. So we want to get it to draw fuel from the tank inside. The same procedure, I'm going to use the, uh, this will be the end that goes on there. And I'm going to, now I'm going to do the exact same thing. Um, I'm going to do some vacuum pressure, vacuum pressure quickly. Okay. Okay, so there, there, I just did that, and look, we saw it move, and it's about four and a half inches of vacuum. So there's a definitive test. That one did not work. This one does work. So let's take that off now, and we'll move into the pressure part of it. So at this point, I know that this fuel pump in question, the customer's fuel pump, will not draw any fuel in and I've just shown you that the one from the shop will draw fuel in so let me switch around and we will do the pressure side now so now we'll do the uh, exact same test with the shop unit the known good one so here's our in we're just going to leave this fitting open to the atmosphere this would be the line that would draw on the fuel tank of course and then we have our two out arrows so one goes to each carburetor. So I'm going to plug one with a little, the same little cap here. I'm going to apply my pressure gauge onto this line here that would go to well, one of the carburetors. And then the same procedure here. I'm going to put my line on for the pulse line on. And then let me pulse it and see what we get as a result on the on the gauge. Okay, so I managed to get it up to um, two psi, and it's holding steady. So just as a comparative, I wanted to do this. I I know what the specs are, but I just wanted you to see this is. The one that fails the test, and this is the one that does work, and it gets the right um, numbers for uh, uh, drawing fuel in and pressure to push it out. So the pump is held together with these uh, six screws here, but we have our two mounting bolt flanges here, and we want it all to go back so that all the hoses point the same way as they did when it came off. So how are we going to do that? Well, we need to index this so we can put it back together the same way. So of real importance, you need to note that there's this outcropping here and here, and it lines up 
with this hole, but it can also line up with that bolt hole. What I always do with them is to make sure that I get it in the right orientation after is I'll make a mark right here. So you can use a little engraver, make a little mark. Just so you know, when you bolt it back on, everything is going to face the same way. Because this is fixed in its position in between these two of where it's going to be. So it's either going to face this way or it's going to be out 180 degrees. So the whole idea is just let's take this apart, mark it so that we can put it back together the way it's supposed to be the first time. Okay, so now we've done that. So I have some fresh paper here because I'm really curious as to why this pump doesn't work because these generally work forever almost, it seems like, very durable. Um, I'm undoing the uh, screws with the, with the, just with the screwdriver because I want to see was there any screws that were loose and no, there was not. So now at this point, I'll just run them out with a, you can do it by hand or whatever you'd like. Uh, anyway, run them all out. Kind of keep it held together because if there's something loose inside there, I want to see it. So let's take all the screws out. And now at this point, there's nothing holding it together. So where is it going to come apart first? So with a little bit of pressure here, Right, just a little pressure there, I can open it up. So I'm very carefully, I'm over the paper. And then what do I see? Well, okay. The gasket is here, it's intact. Um, of course, we're always looking for corrosion. This looks very good. So I'm going to set that aside. I'm happy with that. Of course, we'll be replacing the gasket. And we'll just put that one aside. Now, corresponding, here's the diaphragm that's uh, on the, over the valves here. And it appears absolutely fine. I'm looking at the light going over it. Uh, oh yeah, there you go. So you see the light going over it. So it's not dished down, taking a, you know, it still looks like it's flat so that it can actually go down and up. Okay, so let's take that off very carefully. I want to see if there's anything under. Okay, no. no the, way, uh, the way I make the light shine on it. So it's flat. It hasn't taken a set, like a concave set into it. And the gasket is here. Let's take the gasket off. And if you've ever seen inside one of these fuel pumps before, you're going to know exactly what's wrong with it. The valve is on the wrong side, and it is on that one as well. So this uh, fuel pump has been dismantled by somebody, and no wonder it didn't work because they put the valves in it backwards. So there you go. Darn. So I still haven't seen one of these that's really failed yet. So um, this is uh, because whoever was working on it didn't put it back together properly. So another thing of real importance on here is this side has this barrier down the center and has this little curvature in the center. It has to correspond to the gasket in the other, the other side. And we'll, we'll make more note of that when we put it back together. So let's peel off this gasket. Of course, it's intact. And the diaphragm is flat. So that's fine as far as that. Oh, it's going to come off with the gasket, but that's okay. Oh, nope. Okay, so there we go. So what we'll do here is see what just the way the light reflects off it. No, there's, there's no, uh, no problem with that. That's not an issue. It's still flat. Gasket is still good. It goes over there. Now, how do I know right away? Well, this side here with this beautifully machined um, surface on it and the outer surface here is where this clear piece is actually the valve. It should be on the other side and this head of the rubber 
um, that holds it in should be over there. Okay, so no wonder it doesn't work. Now I'll be using these special side cutters and of the utmost importance because normally you'd be working on this side. If we damage any of those surfaces, this thing is no good. We, we can't put it back together because it'll leak. Uh, the valve won't seal properly. So because this is in backwards, um, what, I, what I normally do, and I'll just show you on this one is, and it's not flat either, is I get underneath of it and I cut the top off, the head of it off. It's kind of like the head of a nail. Okay, then with, uh, with another tool, I can just push it through. Okay, so see it, it came out the other side. And of course you can see the, the shape of the top here. So it's, it just, it goes through and then it opens up and then holds it in down in this spot here. So, so what I'm going to do is, uh, this is, well, I mean, I'm going to put a new kit in it, but I mean, this is damaged anyway. You can't take these out and put them back in again, but just so you see how this is supposed to look, it should have been on this side is how it's supposed to fit. Whoops, okay, well, so I'm gonna use the same tool and I'm gonna come in on this side and I just really, what I'm looking to do is whatever it takes to pull this rubber out. If I can get a grip on it like that underneath and pop it out, then that's fine. It all came out in one piece and that's excellent. And of course, this should be in from this side. I think that valve should have went on there. So how does it work? We have this little disc, little disc here that goes on this side, <laughs> the way it's supposed to be. And then what we do is it's held in from this side. So now when there's pressure on this side, it can touch all the way around and in the center and actually seal. Of course, when it's laying on this side, it, it, there's no uh, surface for it to seal on. It's all bent and everything anyway. So uh, uh, just uh, not assemble. Next step in the process is, yes, I know it looks pretty clean and shiny. This all needs to be washed. I need to know for sure that there isn't anything hiding in the uh, fittings here or anything hiding in these tubes here. So wash and then we'll get to the reassembly part. So as you can see, I have all the components back. Look at that, cleaned up, looks just like brand new. Um, nice and clean here. Whoop. And what I'm gonna do is check uh, in and we can see with the light in there. And we can also see the light, uh, there we go, through the little, the little vent hole that's in there, the little bead hole. So I know for sure this is clean. Um, doesn't just look pretty, it's actually functional. You can see that that, the uh, tube there is completely open. And the same with that one. And the last one, yeah, same there. And also I can look through from uh, the, uh, the inside out. And I can, oh, there we go. I can see through there and Flip it around and make sure that, yeah, that's a little hard to see with the light in there. But anyway, there, absolutely spotless. It's exactly what we want. So next thing I'm going to do is I need to take inventory of all the parts. I have the two valves laying here. They're kind of hard to see. The two diaphragms, the two rubbers that hold the valves on, and my four gaskets. So now it's time to put this together. Oh, yes, and... I've examined uh, under my uh, viewer that um, there isn't any damage to the seats on here. Uh, the same on this side. Uh, especially important to check that on this one since it was mishandled for sure because they put it together backwards. So who knows how they took it apart. So we have to make certain that these surfaces are perfect. So first thing I'm going to do is put a valve in and... 
I'm not sure if you can see, but there's a little curvature to it. It's kind of curved up. If I put it in that way, I need to put it in so that it's curved down. Why? So that when the rubber is holding it down, it keeps it pressed against the surface. So this is the way that it goes this way. Okay. Up in the center and down on the other side. So that's the way that it goes on there. So I put it down that way. And actually you can see the way the light goes over it. You can see that it's got a curve in it. So now I need to use this little tool. The thing is awesome. It's made specifically for these fuel pumps. Uh, and I, I always put a little bit of uh, just two stroke oil. I always have this around. And now what we need to do is press this down through. See if we can make this bigger. And let me move this a bit. All right, there we go. So I'm going to push this through and I wiggle it around a little bit and through it goes. Now, I don't know if you've ever done these before. You know how difficult it is to do that. So here I can see I can push it through and the, the um, barb is all the way through on that side. So that valve is installed. We'll do the same with the other one. So same deal again. And I have to look at it and see which way the curve is in it. Well, this one's a little harder to tell. It's important to get this right. Okay, I got it. So you notice this is the side where it was before. It was on here before. Okay, it's supposed to go on the other side. So there, I've dropped it on. It's in the right orientation. And again, I use my cool little tool. See, it has a little ball in the end of it. And it fits in the hole there. And a little bit of oil on that. And then let's, and I rolled it a little bit and it's through already. Okay, now I want to flip it over and I want to check and make sure that I can see that the whole barb is through and it is so there we go valve installation done so like i said if you've ever tried doing that with a screwdriver or something else it's extremely difficult the tool is what you need to make this a simple and straightforward process where you don't damage anything now i always this is again uh, some two-stroke oil i always oil these before i put them on so I put a little on one side and then I just smear it around and it soaks in. It makes it, the gasket a lot more pliable actually. So that one's done and I'll just carry on and do the rest. So time to assemble this fuel pump. So we're going to identify the gasket that goes on this side, which is of course this one that has the curve in the center joined together. And it has a bump out right there and that lines up with that right there so bump out on the gasket and the bump out on there gasket placement is correct in the center now i just go through any holes doesn't matter two screws and of course i'm holding it now from underneath okay let's take a diaphragm and my diaphragm goes on and now we have to make the next gasket exactly the same so we have to have the bump in the right place and the curvature in the right orientation and we do now this part right here is going to correspond to that which is automatically going to put this in the correct relationship to that gasket right there so it's all going to fit so then let's go and drop this in and what do we have so now we have that half assembled and we're lined up right here. Okay, so I, again, I'm going to tip it over. I keep my fingers um, on the uh, backside to keep the screws from falling out. These are round gaskets, so you can do no orientation on those. And then I take my diaphragm and take another gasket. There we go. And now how do we want to line this up? Remember I put marker on it right there. 
and that needs to correspond to this part right here. So now I'm going to get the orientation right. See right, I have these. And then I'm just pinching it loosely together and I'm tightening up the screws by finger. Why? If I snag something, I don't want to wreck it. Okay. So it's all together. We can move a little bit and that's just fine. So now we'll put the rest of the screws in by finger, of course, because I want to make sure if there's something in there that's uh, this, the screw would snag on, that's not good either. And there's also, of course, another little reference over here too. But I used the big one because I want to mark it in relationship to what side it goes to. Then uh, we're just going to tighten these up uh, by hand. So I've uh, got all the screws snugged up. I'm doing them, you know, offset, just like, you know, you'd put a car tire on, tighten up the nuts. And... Okay, I think that's good. I'm going to go one more time. That's good. That one. That one. There, back to here and over to there. Yep, I'm happy with that. Okay, let's test it and see if it works. So I'm connected to the in port, so I'm expecting to see vacuum on the gauge. Okay, 10 inches right there and it's holding. So happy with that one. So now I'm on the out to the carburetor ones. This one is capped off and I'm on the gauge. So I'm expecting to see some pressure here. So let's see what we can do. Yep. I have some pressure and it's holding. So I'm happy with that. This is a functional fuel pump again. That's how I service these fuel pumps. It's all sealed up. It's going in a uh, plastic bag so that no contaminants can enter it. Uh, the customer will come and pick this up and put it back on his aircraft. Now, a real important note, this is not a how-to video. This is just entertainment to show you how I do the process. If you are not skilled and have the proper tools, don't attempt to fix, repair, service these fuel pumps. It's too important of a component to have an issue. Uh, you know, as we saw, the valves were installed in this one backwards, like on the wrong side. That person should have never attempted a repair on this because apparently, as we see, they had like a zero skill level. They couldn't even remember where all the parts came from. If you're not totally competent and working on your fuel pump, it's too important. Just buy a new one. Okay? Thank you very much for watching today. Uh, thanks for your time. Like, share, subscribe. See you again.